Hello everyone, Amud here from your target common YouTube channel and this will be continuation of race assured end-to-end -end framework playlist video series. In this video, we are going to learn how can we assert the responses. So we are going to see the different assertions and that actually depends upon your test cases or the API behavior. Just for an example, if you see the reports for create airline test cases, so this is the body we pass and once the airline is successful, you can see that it returns the details which contains all those fields whatever we provided as part of payload with some extra fields also like underscore id and underscore v. For the assertion, we should verify whatever data we are passing like we are passing the id, name, country, logo, right? So we should verify whatever data we have provided, the same data it has returned in the response as well because that is the validation we should do. So that we can ensure that whatever data we pass to create an airline, an airline has been created with the same data. So this type of validation we can do in multiple ways. Either you can go and write the JSON path or you can extract the value one by one and you can assert. You can use the map to store the values and then you can compare the map. But there's one way which is much better. We have Pojo airline and this Pojo I'm using to get the payload. So is it possible we can use the same Pojo class to validate the response as well. Just for an example here, we are getting the payload, right? This Pojo I can use to validate as well. So there's no need to create any extra object or there's no need to write any JSON path and validate. So in short, we are going to learn how can we compare two Pojo objects, whether they are same or not. So I'm not going to write any test code as of now. I am just going to show you some demo in which I will simply compare two Pojo objects. I will go to my Pojo's package and I will create a new Pojo class, maybe employee. And since I want to keep the Pojo class simple and short, I will just add two fields like private int id private string name only two fields and let me add one constructor which will be all our construct and i will simply create one test class also and i will name it compare let me add the main method so what i'm going to do i'm going to create an object of employee class employee it will be employee one new employee and i will pass id as one and i will pass the name as amud and let me create another object so here simply we have created two objects. So obviously we know that these two objects are not equal. So let me call some methods and operators. This out I can use employee one double equal employee two and let me call the equals method employee one equals employee two. We know that this equals method coming from object class which is the parent class of all the classes. And since this method is defined in object class automatically it is coming here. That's why we are able to call the equals method here. So let me run the program and let me show you the output. So this expected right because both objects are not same what will happen if i do in step 2 i will put 1 and in step book case i will put amul so simply i have made same value for id and name for both the objects what do you think what's the output this time so let me run and show you the output so it's false false why we have the same values then still it is false so to understand this concept you need to understand how double equal and equals method work you need to understand double equal is operator and equals is the method so by default this one equal double equal operator and equals method both are checking for the reference if the reference are same then only they will return true means we have one object one and object two if both the objects are pointing to the same memory location or memory reference then only these two things will return you true for an example what i'm going to do instead of creating employee two like this i will simply pass the employee one only so now employee one and employee two both are pointing to the same memory reference if i run the program now you can see it is returning true true for both the cases okay that's fine now problem is like we don't want to compare in this way we want that if both the employees have the same data then it should return true that's how we want to compare the object so to achieve that we need to override the equals method if you see the default implementation of equals method in object class which is coming from java or lang package if you come here you can see that it is internally calling the double equal operators only. So if you want that two objects should be same based on their values, then we need to override this equals method and we need to explicitly compare the values. So let me show you an example here. What I'm going to do in the employee class, I'm going to override the method. So let me simply copy the syntax and you can put the override annotation. So here what I want to do, I want to compare if the ID and name are same for both the object then what we can do first we can cast this object to my employee object 
so i will create the employee maybe e equal to let me simply cast the object we can use the cast operator here after this we can compare like return this dot id equal equal e dot id and obviously it should be end and then i can put this dot name equal equal e dot name so what i am doing here i am overriding the equals method from my object class then i am simply casting the object to the employee type and then i am comparing that id of the current object and whatever is passed as part of this equals method their id are same same goes for name and if both are true then only overall result will be true so that i can say that okay since id and name both are same so both the objects are same if any one is false then obviously objects are not same so if i go to compare object dot java and if i run the program now let me show you what will be the output but before that i need to just revert this and we know that now there is no need of double equal operator so i will simply comment it this and let me run the program now now you can see it is returning true if i change instead of id i will change the id from 1 to 2 so this time it will give me false so let me show you the documentation of equals method again i have opened the oracle java doc and here if you go to equals method you see one line here note that it is generally necessary to override the hash code method whenever the, this method is overridden it is saying that whenever you are overriding the equals method you must override the hash code method as well similar to equals method in object class we have another method method called hash code so let me let me show you the hash code method now what is hash code method it returns a hash code value for the object if you see the statements here it says that if two objects are equal according to equals method then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce the same integer result you can understand from this statement here that hash code and equals method both are interconnected actually that's why it is saying that if you are overriding the equals method in your class then override the hash code method as well so that it can return the same integer value but why it is necessary so let me show you an example again in the compare objects only let me put one again and what i'm going to do i'm going to create one hash set equal to new hash set what i'm going to do here let me add both the objects employee one employee two and let me print the set we know that we cannot add the duplicate elements in the hash set and here if you see here we have two objects of employee class and both are containing the same object so what we are expecting that in the hash set we should have only one employee object now right so let me run and show you the output you can see here it is storing two objects because hash set is considering both the employee one employee two are two different objects even equals we have overridden the equals method then also it is not considering them one object why the reason behind that has set is actually calling hash code method and based on the hash code value only has set will define whether objects are same or not because that is the contact written in java doc as well the same statement if two objects are equal according to equals method then calling the hash code method on each of the two objects must produce the same integer result so has set is calling the has code method on those two objects if they are not the same they are going to add the those two objects in the set but why has code is not same here because we have overridden the equals method but not the has code method so it still has code is coming from object class only which will the mm -hmm. default implementation now obviously it is not going to be the same if you see the has code method in object you can see it is a native method so a native method is a java method whose implementation is also written in another programming languages like c or c plus plus you can go and read more about the native methods in java but any native method will not have the body and remember hash code is not the memory address so if you want to override the hash code method then you can use public in hash code whatever way you want to override this method you can do it you can generate some random integer based on the values and all you can if you Google for how can you override the hash code method then you can see different kind of implementations as well but you can go for simple way you can use the return 
and we have one class called objects and here we have method called has and here you can pass id and name whatever property you have you can pass it here so this method will automatically take care of that if i go and run the test case again you can see that it will have only one element in the has set okay so this is the way we can compare two pojo objects or i can say that we compare we can compare two objects in java but if you see here we have only two fields that's why we are written like this but suppose we can have 100 fields and also suppose if we want to add the fields or if you want to remove the fields or if you rename the fields then obviously it will be a lot of headache to go and change it everywhere and also if you see this implementation here i am lacking basic checks also so whenever you override these methods manually then obviously you are going to make some mistake so what is the solution of that there are some different libraries also but in this project we are using lombok right and that lombok will help you to auto generate this equals and has score method i should say overridden equals and has code method which will check the equality of the object let me show you how what i am going to do let me simply remove these two methods here and I am going to add annotation called equals and has code which is coming from Lombok. If I run the program now, what do you think? What's with the output? It is the same whatever we did manually, right? When we manually overridden both the methods, then we are getting this output. But with the one annotation provided by Lombok, we are able to achieve the same thing. What will happen if I add a new field? I will add a new field called private string gender. Do I need to do it? Do I need to do anything here? No. But suppose if you have it overridden manually, then you need to go and add the check for gender field. So let me go and run the program again. Obviously, it will show you the error because we have it all our constructors. So let me add male, male, and let me run the program again. Okay, you can see true and we we have only one element in the set let me change the id from one to two and run the program again okay it's expected if i show you the generated class mm -hmm. so let me go to projects and if i go to target inside here we have the employee generated class and if you see here it is adding the equals method for you and you can see below it is also overriding the hash code method as well you can see that how equals method it has overridden it is checking like if they are matching the id then they are matching the name then they are matching the gender also so whatever we did manually this annotation is automatically doing for you and also if you go to hash code method then they are doing something so that it will generate this integer value and this method will be used by hash set to check the equality of the object. So this is how we can compare the two objects are equals or not. And really this is very important and I will show you one and I will show you that how it can be useful to compare our response object in the next video. So if you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.